Hello everybody and welcome to this video. So today we're going to be talking about the first of the anti-government forces, the best forces in the game and of course we're going to start off with the best of the best, the creme de la creme, the socialists or the people's armies. Um, of course I'll try my best to contain my biases, it's going to be quite hard um, but let's try and be a little bit objective here, I don't want to be losing too many subscribers. Um, anyway. Um, this is easily the best faction of the game to play, that said, um, and there's plenty of options here. And of course, we're going to go through two approaches again. And the first one being the well-equipped, most likely Soviet-backed uh, people's assault columns. This represents the most organised of the working class, you might say, the vanguard. And of course, is one of the only uh, regular armies in the Civil War to be fighting for socialism. Um, it might contain veterans from the Spanish Civil War, we're going to be going down that kind of line. Um, and genuinely just gives you a, a well-armed force. Um, and the second approach is going to be much more ragtag. It's going to be the Workers' Defence Corps as a kind of loose basis, but it can represent any kind of workers' militia from communists, Trotskyists to uh, just your standard trade unionists. Um, and of course, the main thing that unites them is just they wanted to defend their workplace in what is objectively quite a harsh time for workers' rights. Um, and when you've got fascists knocking at the door, you are going to have to repel them with a bullet. So that's what they're going to be going for. And um, we'll just go straight into it. Alright, so talking about the first approach, it's obviously going to be the people's assault columns. Um, I won't lie, um, I'm very much basing this on the international brigades as seen in the Spanish Civil War. Um, it's probably the closest kind of comparison. Um, the equipment is basically almost identical pretty much um, but the main theme of it, it reflects a rugged but well-armed workers army so we're going to be sticky with that kind of theme um, and of course if you're going down the Spanish Civil War line Empress Miniatures is, a, is your best friend obviously so uh, I think nearly all of this is actually from Empress so um, if you're wondering where their pictures come from it's from there unless mentioned otherwise um, so the first section we're going to try and go for a kind of political elite unit uh, there to enforce the party line or uh, just to be the best fighters in the unit um, in the platoon um, and for this we're going to go for the assault guard figures it gives you nice peak caps um, so they look quite official um, almost like a kind of N NKVD kind of thing for the Soviets um, and for these to make a section uh, we're going to want the packs they're really really captivating names these so ASG 1, 2 and 3 so that gives you a section of 10 men and uh, some officer figures and also a commissar figure as well um, you know which you're gonna need if you think of um, a kind of Soviet army or a socialist army commissars are gonna be coming up from there uh, in the next two sections again really interesting names here the International Brigade figures uh, it's gonna be PAX IB 1, 2, 3, 6 and 7 um, which gives us two nine-man sections um, armed with LMGs, so they've got the firepower and they could lay it down onto the enemy. Um, it also gives you another officer if you want to try and mix it up a little bit and a beautiful figure of a flag um, so you can fly high the column's colours um, or just a red flag in general, you know, keep the red flag flying here. Um, the People's Assault Columns were, uh, were actually given official colour ceremonies just like any kind of regular army. Um, so there you go, may as well make use of that. Um, for support teams as well, these are almost uh, in, in abundance. Um, IB-5 gives you an International Brigade's Maxim machine gun, a beautiful little kit. Um, and of course we're going back to the trusty Mort 1 uh, for some light mortars. Um, again, just to rain down a little bit more heavy firepower. And if you're looking for something a little bit more special, uh, maybe the RAT-2, which I believe stands for Republican Artillery, uh, not an actual RAT. Um, the Rat 2 pack which gives you a nice crude anti-tank gun to take down any kind of armor that you might face up against. And finally, uh, we can't talk about Soviet support without mentioning tanks. You know, Comrade Stalin is back in this force, so a tank is pretty necessary. Um, we've got to buy into the tanky stereotype. So the classic choice here is going to be either a T26 or a BT5. We'll go for the BT5 here just because it's slightly better. Um, we want, to, we want the class enemy to feel the wrath 
of, um, of the armed proletariat. Um, but either option is useful. Um, again, BT5 has got a nice little bit, a bit better armor, and it's a little bit quicker as well. So you can be speeding about and doing all the maneuvering you want to do. Um, and finally, uh, some artillery as well. Um, again, just to really pack home that these guys are well armed. Um, Rat free again, standing for Republican artillery. Um, gives us a really nice little light howitzer. Um, the crew is really easy to do, making it um, you know look uh, quite ragtag. They've got different kind of hats. You can paint the uniforms differently, uh, make them look a bit rugged, um, and you know you can rain death from above upon the fascists. And everyone wants to do a bit of that. You know, ev everyone's into that. So. Get your center light howitzer. Overall, this gives you a properly solid force. Uh, it's armed up to the nines. Um, and it also gives you access to Spanish veterans if you want to make it a bit more of an elite force rather than a, um, a ragtag kind of thing. So the total for these, that's including all the support teams, is going to be £116. It's what, I think it's one of the most expensive armies yet. But again, take away maybe the, uh, the, the artillery or the anti-tank gun. And it brings you down to about you know 103 quid which is i don't think that's too bad for what is a solid force so for approach number two the workers defense corps um we're going to be getting be bouncing around a little bit more we want the variety here um and again to represent the workers militias from communist to trotskyist to socialist to trade unions so you can get any kind of variety you want here but the common feature ragtag workers militia militia We'll work off the idea of, of course, the industrial proletariat. So expect to be painting a lot of blue boiler suits just because it's a nice look, in it? So um, expect that. We're going to start off with foot saw, as per usual. Uh, but we're not going to rely on them this time. We are going to be going to different kind of websites. So for the officers, we're going to want the workers' militia characters. Um, so that gives us a lovely little officer figure, a Galava Molotov cocktail, and a sergeant um, and an LMG. Uh, to bolster it up to make a section, uh, we want two of the workers' militia packs. Um, so, you know, that gives us ten men, um, two packs twice, eight, the sergeant and the LMG. Nice little industrial looking units to represent steel workers or any other kind of variety of the working class that you want. Section two, we're going to carry on with the kind of steel worker feel, uh, basing this on a, a picture I put up of the uh, of British workers during the Second World War sending tanks to Russia. Um, so we're going to kind of incorporate a little bit of Soviet back in here. Um, they're going to have Budenovkas, which is just really fun. A really nice bit of headpiece. Um, and firstly, we were, we're going to want another one of uh, Foot Saw's workers' militia characters. Again, just for that sergeant and LMG. They're working really nicely. Just uh, paint them in. Very similar kind of scale. And then we're going to want to go to Eureka Miniatures for eight of their Soviet factory militia with rifles, um, they do it individually, so make sure you order them eight times. Um, they'll send you all the different varieties, um, and they're, they're, they're beautiful figures. Um, they blend in really nicely. Again, they've all got the boiler suits. Um, some of them have the, I can't remember what, the, what it's called, it begins with T. Um, I haven't got, any, I haven't got uh, the notes for that. Um, it's, it's a Soviet kind of quilted jacket that they wore in the Second World War. So some of them are wearing them, some of them are wearing Budenovkas, like I say and the rest of them are all wearing cloth caps so again they're working really well for uh, for british factory militia as well as the soviets um and finally we're going to want to go to sloppy jalopy for their minus set of course um it's going to give us a burly kind of section you can give them special rules to reflect their tough status you know you're going to get you're going to get pretty strong if you don't pit every day um, it also includes two banner bearers who can be based together to put up a really nice trade union banner Look up your local area, your local kind of branches, um, and see the, um, you know, reflect that kind of bit of English working class history. Or you can do them separately as individual flagmen if you want to kind of add your own flag or, uh, you know, both approaches work. So you can have two flagmen or you can put them together for a nice TU banner. There's a really nice one out there that actually has Lenin and James Connolly on it and Keir Hardy. So I'm going to put that with my miners, but of course, the choice is up to you. Um, they're all lovely figures nonetheless, and you can buy different heads for them as well if you don't want them wearing the, the miners' helmet. Uh, support teams are sadly quite lacking. Um, as we said in the last video, when it comes to a kind of civilian feel, there isn't too much out there, but there's a little bit. Foot saws work as a medium machine gun is an obvious choice. It can be modelled quite well to represent the noble defence of the barricades by the working class. 
Um, it's a lovely little set when you do get that painted up. Um, we'll also add in the socialist sniper figure just to reflect the progressive gender equality of uh, the socialist idea because women can also pick up rifles, believe it or not. Um, and of course you can snipe fascist leaders from afar. Uh, for a mortar, again, there's not too much out there sadly, but we'll go to the we'll go back to Empress again for the Spanish Civil War mortar one set again. This is really getting we get really getting the use out of this set. Um, but I actually can't find anything else that kind of fits in with the army, so Maybe more foreign support with the weird kind of helmets and stuff. Um, make up your own kind of reason. But it'll feel working fine. Just paint it up to look like that. And finally, we want some armor. Um, tanks may be the way if you want to pledge your allegiance to Moscow. Uh, but if you reject those kind of troublesome continental trends, um, you're still not short of options. Don't worry. Being the working class, we can kind of safely assume that they're going to have seized the means of production. And there's plenty of arms factories across the country. So... You might be able to have access to British tanks or at least some kind of armoured car. And if nothing else, you should have steel to at least kind of build your own. Um, so for choices, uh, we of course have the Soviet T-26, a staple of the interwar. You could also go for the British Vickers again. It might be a meme at this point, but it really is a useful tank. Um, and, or you could go for any kind of armoured car from Empress's Spanish Civil War range. Um, so again, you kind of have the free reflections there. Moscow. Um, homebrew tanks or some of them built in their own back garden yeah, and this should give you quite a tough kind of rugged force to protect the working class areas and it averages at about £98.50 depending on what kind of tank you went for in the end um, and I don't think that's too bad again this is probably one of my favourite armies and I've really kind of built on this idea now, just getting on to the centrepieces, um, unfortunately, there aren't too many characters for the People's Armies floating about. Of course, we're about the class itself, not individual hero heroism, is my excuse for this, um, when in reality, there's just not enough models out there. Um, so I replaced the kind of usual section about fun characters with interesting units, you know, foreign support, um, you know, after all, works of the world unite in it, that kind of stuff. So first of all, uh, we're going to go for Budinovka equipped Soviets. Um, they make quite a dashing kind of unit. Um, you know, volunteers from the Soviet Union wearing kind of surplus gear, maybe bringing supplies with them. Um, because the Budinovka was still being worn up until about Operation Barbarossa, I think is when it was fully, uh, fully phased out. They're still wearing it in the Winter War, so uh, there's that to go off. Um, but for this, we're going to be going to Copplestone Casting. Uh, with their back of beyond range, they've got a load of really nice Russian Civil War figures and we're going to go for the Elite Infantry here, I believe it's called. Gives us a really nice rifle armoured unit of quite dashing looking uh, Soviet soldiers. Um, next, um, we're going to cover the kind of Irish diaspora in England with the, I believe it's the Pulp Miniatures, um, Colonial German Rifles. Yep, unconventional I know, but... The uniforms are almost exactly like the Irish Citizens Army of 1916, so maybe not too accurate, but you can imagine, um, I, I know that, for example, Sheffield and Leeds had quite big um, Irish populations, so maybe they've dug out an old uniform or they've made their own, um, and they're now serving for the good old cause over in, um, in Britain instead of Ireland. Um, anyway, this is just a fun excuse to get some nice bright green onto the table. It's a, a nice colourful unit. I'll try find a picture of my own stuff there and slap that up. And the third kind of special unit, um, there's always the Royal Navy to turn to. Um, and I'll stick with me here. You know, you, you hear the word Royal and you might be having doubts and questions. But the reason for that is that historically, in nearly every single revolution in the 20th century, um, the Navy had always been the vanguard, really. Um, the Russian Revolution, you have the sales of Kronstadt. Um, in Germany, in 1918 to 19, you had the sales of Kiel, who actually kicked that off. And even in Britain as well, in 1919, um, you had sailors who actually mutinied um, to stop um, troops being sent to fight uh, for the whites in the Civil War um, in Russia. So there's a history there. Um, so it stands to reason that the Navy would also probably mutiny in this setting and it's also just a fun excuse to get more fancy blue uniforms to match the boiler suit kind of look that we've built off uh, the uh, the workers defense corps with or just an elite unit to add to the people's assault columns you know the naval kind of solidarity um, and for the units uh, for this and um, we want to go to warlord they do an excellent section box 
just discard the officer, we know we'll have none of that aristocratic stuff around here, um, and throw in a more upstanding, politically correct, correct proletarian, and you're off, that'll make a beautiful unit. Lastly, we want a big tank, and once again, Uncle Joey Steele has us covered. Uh, we can assume that Britain would be a much higher priority than Spain uh, for the common turn if, you know, if a British civil war was to happen. So, building off that, I can also suppose that the tanks that they'll send would also be a bit more modern, a bit more heavily armoured, a bit more up to date. Uh, so let's throw in a T-28. Um, it gives you a light howitzer and two medium machine guns, which should just prove to be an absolute infantry killing machine. Also. It looks cool as hell. So, uh, unfortunately though, not too many models exist for this. There is a trench works model, which is exceedingly expensive for some reason. Um, but for this, we'll go to a, we'll go to 3D printing, you know. Um, it's a little bit cheaper, so it saves you a few bob. And also, the quality isn't that bad at all, you know, it, it's passable. So, um, a T28 in there as your centerpiece tank. And that concludes this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you're inspired to pick up the red flag and fight for the good old cause. Um, of, of course, I certainly am. So, um, let me know any kind of suggestions, how what you thought of the video, what you think of the army list that I'm throwing out there. And um, any other comments will be much appreciated. Thank you for the continued support. I do really appreciate it. I'm really enjoying making these videos for you. Anyway, that's all from me. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.